So the main reason that they have a disproportionate effect on the queer community is that queer porn is um, primarily made in very small outfits, maybe one or two person businesses like mine. And the cost of age verification are going to be borne by the site owner. So um, if we're paying even a proportionate, um, based on our traffic cost, either per age check or per month, we're going to be taking a real slice off our profits. And a lot of us are already not making much of a profit. We're doing it because we love it and because we want to make material that if we'd been a young person trying to find out about sex, we would have wanted to find. Um, the really scary thing is that MindGeek, who are the um, biggest porn uh, company in the world, they own, um, I'm told, up to 90% of the porn sites, um, particularly the adult-free tube sites such as YouPorn, RedTube, etc., Pornhub. Um, they're going to be rolling out an age verification solution um, which they're anticipating um, age verifying 25 million UK internet users in the first month which means that a third of the UK population, the ones who are most eager to look at porn, are already going to be verified using MindGeek system. And so any site that wants to have a streamlined user journey and make it easy for our customers to be able to get into our content are going to have an advantage if we use MindGeek system. The problem is that we're then going to be paying essentially um, a MindGeek tax to our biggest market dominant competitor who is making their money pirating our stolen content, um, decontextualizing it, stripping it of everything which might make it ethical, such as interviews, um, behind the scenes information, information about the performers, their relationships, why they're doing it, often user uploaded in language that the performers would not have consented to be described by, including transphobic, misogynistic, racist slurs. Um, and so I can't see how this um, law could fail to increase the market share of the company which is already threatening to homogenize porn in a worryingly heteronormative, misogynistic way. So I think it's important to talk about these issues at events like AllCon because this isn't just a sex issue, um, it's also a human rights issue. Um, the right to sexual expression and to have a sexuality is fundamental and erotica and porn are the backbone of free speech, they're a declaration of humanity. So while it's an easy target, if technologies and legislation are being developed which compromise our freedom of expression, particularly in a way which inhibits diversity, then that could have a knock-on effect that could affect a lot of the ways in which we freely express ourselves online and offline. You know, the marginalised communities are always the easiest to hit. They're the most vulnerable, they're the most precarious, and the impact is highest when um, people who are trying to make a living producing their own content online can no longer do so. So the fear that I have is that we're going to end up with um, you know, a porn industry which has become like Facebook, you know, there's only one place that everyone goes. The content is created in a way which is designed to appeal to the lowest common denominator. You know, there's a power law distribution effect where the more something is looked at, the more it's looked at. And so um, we can't trust tube sites to use the correct pronouns, to not use transphobic language, to not use sexist um, words to describe us. We can't trust them to even be ethical you know, um, business people in terms of how they pay the producers that, um, whose content they're monetizing. And if that is the only place you're going to be able to find porn, then everything that anti-porn people talk about in terms of porn being degrading, misogynistic, exploitative, is going to become true because that's all you're going to be able to find. Whereas at present, in the open internet, there's an absolutely thriving ecosystem that has been growing exponentially over the last 40 years of producers and performers, um, sex workers, taking the means of production into their own hands producing their own material, DIY material, at home, selling it online because the internet has democratised pornography and the cost of entry has become a lot, lot lower. And we risk all of that healthy diversity which is finally making it possible for young people to find out what might be available to them, you know, even if they're the only queer in their rural town, which can be a serious public health problem, you know, these people are committing suicide. But if they can get online and find that there are people like them, living life, loving life, having healthy relationships, negotiating consent, having fun and having sex, then I think that can only be a good thing. And I think that our right to produce and look at that sort of content freely must be protected.